Welcome to the Bison Information Network. I'm Mackenzie Stockwell, and tonight I'll be taking you through the latest in campus and local news. Stay tuned. With Halloween in the rearview mirror, the Christmas season is swiftly approaching. In fact, Mariah Carey, being the queen of Christmas, proclaimed that it's time for Christmas in a video released on November 1st. With holiday spirit in the air, NDSU is hosting a festive Christmas workshop on November 14th at 6 p.m. at the Service Center. There is a cost of $7 to attend the workshop, where you'll learn how to build a decor Christmas tree. Spots are limited, so sign up fast for this festive fun. NDSU will not hold any classes this Friday, the 10th, as it is a federal holiday. This Saturday, November 11th, is Veterans Day. Many businesses in the FM area will be hosting Veterans Day deals, discounts, and freebies. WDAY has compiled an entire list of these discounts, which includes many free meal options, free coffee, and free insomnia cookies if you present a military ID. Enjoy your day off. If you're looking for something fun to do over the long weekend and, and have a passion for dancing, there's a perfect pastime for you. Learn the Lindy Hop this weekend. The group, literally called Learn the Lindy Hop, offers classes to learn this historically significant dance style with its stretch, movement, and great connection. The course offers a beginner lesson, followed by intermediate, and finally, social dance time. The class times range between 2 and 6 p.m. Classes will be held this Saturday, November 11th, at the Spirit Room in Fargo. If you plan to attend, bring your student ID to receive a discounted price of only $5. If you like thrifting and treasure hunting through vintage items, you'll love the Fargo Moorhead Vintage and Flea Market. This timeless event will be an afternoon adventure that allows you to explore and indulge in many vendors selling vintage clothes, antiques, and trinkets. There will also be food, art, and a curated beauty bar, which features nail and brow artists. Additionally, they're hosting a coat and glove drive. If you're feeling generous and are able to give away gently used winter clothing, don't hesitate to bring it to this event and donate. The market is held this Saturday, November 11th, from noon to five at Ivy and Rose Warehouse. The Human Rights Film Festival will be taking place over the weekend. Film festival screenings will occur nightly from November 9th to the 11th at the Fargo Theater. The festival will showcase films such as Dancing in a Yard, followed by a panel with local advocate Leonard Wells, a screening of Black Barbie, and spoken word poetry with local writer, activist, and NDSU student Kayla Jones, and a showing of Imagining the Indian, the fight against Native American mascots, followed by a panel with the filmmakers. All films will be shown at the Fargo Theater. On the topic of films, Five Nights at Freddy's has become the highest grossing horror film of 2023. Five Nights at Freddy's is a live adaptation of the popular video game, which shares the same title. It is based off of an immense amount of lore centering around the game that follows a newly employed security guard named Mike as he works at abandoned Freddy Fazbear Pizza. He and his sister soon find out that the pizzeria is home to animatronics possessed by murdered children and scary antics ensue. The movie combines horror with trauma, mystery, and humor to create a beautifully entertaining storyline. Though the movie has received mixed reviews from critics and fans alike, with some disappointed by its shortage of horror, the movie has proven to be a box office hit, currently grossing $215 million. There are already rumors that a sequel will be following this success. Coming up after the break, Logan will bring you the latest in sports news on campus. Stick around. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. One kid, one mentor, 
plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. Become a big today. At NDSU, we're going to teach you about how to work with people. We're going to teach you about relationships with people and how to manage those relationships successfully, whether that's at work, whether that's at home. We have majors in agricultural communication, strategic communication, journalism, and management communication. We have students who have graduated who are doing all kinds of different things, everything from marketing to writing content to development to career coaching. We also, of course, have people doing more traditional things like a news reporter or working for TV stations. The faculty members in our department advise undergraduate students. We think that it's important for faculty to develop relationships with our undergrads. We have a advisory board, and that consists of people in the community who are like, like local business people, and we try to make connections with those people so that literally we know the person that they should talk to about a job. You can't be in the world if you can't communicate. My recommendation is that you take some communication classes at the very least if you can. Even better, do a major in communication. Welcome in to one of the most awaited Bison sports reports this year. Kicking off with a football team, it was time for the Bison to show if they were the real deal or just an afterthought as they headed to Brookings in the biggest game of the year. Their opponent, an SDSU team that had breezed through the season, only having two games decided by 10 or less. The Bison got off to a promising start with Zach Mathis scoring to cap a 12-play drive by the Bison to start the scoring on the day. They would surrender a touchdown in the soon drive before Griffin crossed the field goal made it at 9-7 game in favor of the Bison. It looked like NSU had the game under control and was going to keep it close, but that would prove to be false hope as the Jackrabbits would fire off 23 unanswered points, dominating the game and never giving the Bison a chance to make it close. The Bison would score late on yet another Zach Mathis touchdown, but it was too little, way too late, as they fell short 16-33. Cam Miller put together a decent stat line, but would also throw two interceptions in what would be his worst game on the year. Zach Mathis was instrumental in the Bison having a shot as he reeled in two touchdowns on the day. Unlike Mathis, the Bison's special teams was not up to par, with Krosa missing one field goal and having another blocked, costing the team those much-needed points. Now after the humbling loss, it will be go big or go home time for the Bison as they head into their final two games of the season. They'll be back in the Fargo Dome this Saturday to host a number 11 Southern Illinois team as the Bison are still looking for a win against a ranked opponent this season. The game will kick off this Saturday at 2.30 and can be watched on ABC North Dakota or ESPN+. Now fresh off a dominant exhibition win against St. Olaf, the men's basketball team opened the regular season against an intriguing opponent in Western Michigan. Making matters a little tougher was the prospect of playing on the road against those Broncos and it definitely showed early as the Bison got off to a rocky start in the first half. They would fall behind 28-38, to 38, largely due to their brutal shooting in the half, shooting 31 from the field and 25% from three. But that halftime speech must have been the stuff of legend as NDC roared back to life, outscoring Western Michigan by 10 and completely turning their shooting woes around. However, this wasn't enough to end it in regulation as the game would roll into overtime in a 71-71 tie. It was a series of misses to begin overtime before Western Michigan cracked the drought over two minutes in. However, the Bison rattled off eight unanswered, handing them a comfortable lead to ride out a last-second Broncos three, allowing NDSU to escape with an 80-76 overtime win. The night's success can be largely given to the efforts of Bowden Skunberg, who led the Bison on 25 points and his ability to drain the much-needed three. Jakari White was also lights out from deep, going four for six and adding two key steals, and Andrew Morgan commanded the boards all night with his 13 rebounds. After a huge momentum win like that, the next opponent seemed a little bit easier for the Bison. They would travel back to host Mount Marty in Wednesday night in a game where the Bison were the heavy favorites coming in. At first, there was a little tension as the Bison headed into the half with only a nine-point lead. They weren't shooting poorly like in their Western Michigan game. Rather, Mount Marty was just red hot in the first half. Yet that Bison defense came out strong in the second half, and the Lancers cooled off tremendously as a result. NEC was able to put together nice runs of 12-2 and 9-0 to help them build their lead to close out the night, with the Bison triumphing 93-66. to 
The Bison once again had Bowden Scunberg to thank as he contributed nearly half the team's threes on the night. And to Javis Miller surprisingly grabbed board after board, having nearly half as many as Mount Marty with his 10 boards on the night. While the three straight wins to open the season feels good, a reality check may be arriving fast for the Bison as they take on number eight Creighton this weekend. The game will tip off in Omaha this Saturday at 1. It can be watched on FS2. The women were also in action this past Tuesday as they traveled to South Dakota to face Creighton in a neutral site game. Although it should have felt like a home game for the Bison, they stumbled out of the gate, falling behind in the first quarter after only scoring four points. They were unable to rally against a sharp Blue Jays team as they headed into the half down 18-36. to The game was pretty much out of reach as the Bison were unable to muster up the points to catch up or even reduce the deficit, falling 52-75 to to the Blue Jays. L. Evans was a sharp shooter on the night for the Bison, draining multiple shots from downtown, but Heaven Hamling struggled all night, making one of her nine attempts in a concerning performance. Evans was also the only Bison to record double-digit points, something this Bison team hopes is a one-off. They'll get their chance to prove that it was nothing but first-game nerves as they head back home. The Bison will play host to an in-state team welcoming Jamestown into Fargo. That game will tip off tonight at 5 and can be watched on WDAY Extra or the Summit League Network. Now, while one women's sport is ramping up, the other one is slowing down a little bit, as the volleyball team only had one game this past week, something I'm sure they welcomed after having six games in two weeks. The Bison would play host to a struggling Jackrabbits team looking to play out the upset, but NSU came out of the gates ready, willing themselves through the first two sets, taking both by two points. But then the wheels started to come off a little bit as SDSU took the next two sets and knotted up at a 2-2 to -two tie. However, good teams tend to rally, and the Bison did just that, taking the final set 15-9 to prevent a shocking home loss and continue their winning streak. Allie Hinsey continued to impress in her senior season as she led the Bison once again in kills with her 18 on the day. Lauren Jansen also continued to prove her freshman success has been no fluke, and Ariana Bloom was a block machine for the Bison, with her six blocks playing a key part in that nail-biter. The Bison will look to keep their six-game win streak alive as they enter the final stretch of the regular season. They will play three games over the next six days, with games Thursday, Saturday, and Tuesday. That home stretch will kick off fittingly at home. The Bison will host Kansas City in their senior night game as they aim to finish strong in the championship race. That game will be underway tonight at 7 at Benson Bunker Fieldhouse. If you are able to, show out and cheer on our seniors. It's a season of high tensions and nerves for both Bison teams as the cross-country teams prepare for their final meet of the season. With the men's and women's teams coming off of runner-up and third-place finishes respectively, it's not a leap to say that that bar has been set high going into this weekend. Keep an eye on both teams this weekend as the men are ranked in the all-time best 10th in the pre-meet rankings, following up their best conference meet performance in 41 years. Now, the women are nothing to scoff at either, ranking 11th in the Midwest region and looking to beat their best regional finish of 7th place back in 2012. The meet featuring over 40 teams, a lot can happen, but both teams have one goal in mind, and that is winning it all. That goal will be tested this Friday in Stillwater, Oklahoma, as both teams participate in the NCAA Midwest Regional. The women's race will begin at 10.30, followed by the men at 11.30. Good luck to both teams. And we close today's Bison Sports Report with the wrestling team, who are headed into a demanding match against a ranked Nebraska team featuring six wrestlers in the top 30 of their weight class. The match went as expected for NSU, with the Bison losing their first two matches before managing to win one, but it would be all Nebraska, as they went on to win seven of the ten matchups and finished with a score of 31-12. to The matchup was not a fun one, but definitely one the Bison hoped to learn and grow from as the season goes on. One highlight of the night was Gavin Sachs being named Big 12 Co-Wrestler of the Week. The award is the first of Sachs' career and only the sixth for North Dakota State. The Bison will be back in action this weekend as they host their 52nd annual Bison Open. The Open will be held this Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Shield Center. And that does it for another week of Bison Sports. I saw some snow earlier today while I was out and about. Now, Henry, can we expect more snow, or is this just that weather messing with us once again? Thanks, Logan. So right now, we're looking at some pretty uh, cold weather right now. Temperature is 33 degrees right now. Overcast skies, dew point of 31 with a humidity of 85. It's a wet one. Wind's coming from the northwest at 14 degrees. No, 14 miles per hour, sorry.
Uh, going to our hour by hour, it's got to be pretty overcast and cloudy with broken clouds and partly cloudy skies as the temperature drops from 35, 40, 32, uh, 32 again, 31 to 30, uh, all the way at 6 in the morning. Going to our sky cast, we had a sunrise of 7.21 a.m. with a sunrise of 5 o'clock. Uh, meaning our total sunrise, our total sun, uh, was nine hours and 39 minutes. Going to our moon cast, uh, we had a waxing, waning crescent uh, with a third quarter on November 5th, and coming up, a new moon on November 13th. Moving to today's almanac, uh, today we had a high of 39 and a low of 30. Average temps on this day in the past were a high of 50. 46 and a low of 28. Record temps were a high of 73, a, a high of 73 in 1978 and a low of negative 7 in 1951. Moving to our national temperatures, it's cooling down all across the country. As you can see here uh, in the uh, in the northwest uh, up into the midwest we're seeing some cool temperatures and even down in this section of the country we're seeing cooler temperatures and even down in the south we're seeing some cooler temperatures than normal uh going to a rain cast we're not expecting much rain up here in fargo in the next 20 uh 48 hours we are expecting a lot in that south region and some snow all the way up here in uh, oregon and washington snow and rain moving on to our seven day forecast uh, Friday, uh, we're expecting part, mostly cloudy skies with a high of 36 and a low of 29. And this weekend is faring pretty much the same thing. 41 Highs of 41 and 53 with Saturday and Sunday being both partly cloudy. Moving on to the rest of the week, we're seeing mostly to partly cloudy skies the entire week. We're not seeing a lot of sun. And when we're seeing it, it's covered by clouds. Uh, with highs dipping into the 50s, so we're getting some pretty warm weather. With lows dipping into the 30s, especially that Monday with a uh, low of 30. Well, that's all I got for my weather broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining me this week. Back to you, Logan. Well, you better believe that I am thrilled to hear that this weather day is just going to be a fake out. I'm definitely going to be out this weekend to soak in some of that warmer weather while I still can. And that will do us here tonight on the Bison Information Network. We appreciate you all taking the time to tune in, and we will see you next week. Take care.